MSC looking for employees to work on board their ships. A teacher at 8 Mile Rock High, the new area vice president of the Educators Managerial Union. And a Bahamian selected to serve as a member of a prestigious environmental body. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. Thomas tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Shishina Wolf Farkasin. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news this evening, Office of the Prime Minister, Grand Bahama, and MSC Cruises announcing the relaunch of the MSC Cruises Employment Initiative on Grand Bahama. According to a statement issued by the Office of the Prime Minister, MSC, in its commitment to generating new investments in tourism, shipping, and maritime education sectors of the Bahamian economy, has agreed to re establish its program in the investment of training and hiring Bahamian crews. MSC cruises have agreed to hire up to 220 Grand Bahamian crew members to staff its cruise ships in the areas of food and beverage, housekeeping, guest services, entertainment, photography, deck and engine ratings. Interested persons should submit their resumes to New Job Opportunities 2019 at gmail.com. Now applicants will be contacted to attend a job recruitment exercise in early May. Successful candidates will participate in a number of training exercises during the months of May and June in preparation for a new and exciting career in the cruise industry. In other news, members of the Bahamas Educators Managerial Union heading to the polls Friday morning to elect a new slate of officers to represent them for the next three years. After the votes were tallied, a guidance counselor from the West was selected as area vice president for Grand Bahama. Guidance Counselor Fraser Gibson was recently elected to serve as the new Area Vice President of the Bahamas Educators Managerial Union. Gibson says that for the next three years, she is looking to implement more training for managers and administration. I believe once persons are put into positions, they ought to be trained properly so that they can offer themselves effectively in the positions that they were given. I'm also looking for the establishment where our president is a, on a full-time basis rather than being a part of a school and still have to hear the needs of the entire country in terms of his managers and the supervisors of education. And I believe with time we will get to the place where we want to be. Um, I don't want to preempt anything because we haven't met as an entire executive body as yet and so we will come together collaboratively so that we can put our heads together and see which way we would move the union forward. She says that some managers have concerns over the lack of sufficient curriculum officers. The curriculum officers are very vital to the fabric of education in particular. They provide the support guidance, the monitoring, inspection, evaluation, and the reporting of the process of teaching and learning in schools. And so they give the managers an idea of what is happening in the classroom. They assist us. And so they are very important. I believe we have about two or three just left in Grand Bahama due to retirement. Um, and so they were not replaced. She adds that another concern is a salary reassessment. So teachers' salaries have grown more quickly than the managers' salaries. And there has to be a change in this area. I believe that the education managers should receive salaries that speak to what they do in their various capacities. And so we seek to ensure that we have a salary reassessment so that it is in alignment with current industry practices. The union is led by Stephen McPhee out of New Providence. Megan Shepard, CNNS Network News. Switching gears now, a local environmentalist is making history, not just for this country, but the region. The leader of EarthCare was recently selected a member of the Cornell University Climate Change Fellowship. She's one of the 35 persons appointed to this global body. Italia Hall explains. 
80 actions were provided to the 35 candidates to help bring an end to climate change. Environmentalist Gail Woon says it's an honor to be selected by Cornell University. Woon says she selected LED light bulbs as her action and she's now issuing a challenge to the country to purchase the LED bulbs for your homes or workplace. LED light bulbs use 70 to 90 percent less energy than these older light bulbs and um, that means less pollution, that means less uh, fossil fuels burnt, and less asthma for kids, less discomfort for people with respiratory diseases or heart, heart disease um, as well. Um, these bulbs are more efficient. They're actually... Um, some of them are brighter. She says while the LED bulbs cost a bit more, they last longer. She says she's committed to this project because she cares about the impact climate change has on the country. The more fossil fuels or greenhouse gases that we emit, or you know, our power plants fueled by fuel oil, um, then the more we burn, the faster climate change is going to happen. And the faster climate change happens, it's not good for us because we're one of the top 10 countries that will be vulnerable to sea level rise. Wong says she has also been handing out surveys and has started the challenge on social media as well. We started on April 12th and going till, I think, for two weeks. And then we have to show our professor how much impact we had, if any, and um, so I cheated. I started March 21st, um, and I'm hoping to run it past the deadline because the fellowship ends May 9th, so I'm hoping to continue the challenge. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. He has made headlines internationally after what officials called an unprovoked attack while visiting a restaurant in the United States. While well, tonight, Bahamas Air Manager Harold Williams gives an update on that ongoing investigation. The scar on his face is a daily reminder of a traumatizing experience that Bahamas Air Manager and Grand Bahamian Harold Williams says he will never forget. By now, you've probably heard about the attack that took place in South Florida last month. Williams traveled to the States to pick up medication and was running errands when he stopped at the sandwich shop to use the restroom. After receiving permission from an employee that it was okay to do so, he was stabbed in the face with an 8 to 10 inch knife and then told by another person who was in the shop to never come back. His attacker was identified as 24-year-old Fawaz Hassan, an employee of Pines Market, who was taken into custody following the alleged incident. He was charged with, well, first of all, he was, the first charges was a second degree felony, all right? I think it was aggravated battery um, and assault. Uh, that was the first charge. The charges have now been upgraded to aggravated battery and assault with a deadly weapon uh, with the intention of causing bodily harm and leaving a, a permanent scar. That felony, uh, that, uh, felony carries a uh, jail term of 30 years. He says he has no idea why this happened. There's speculation that, you know, it, you know, it, it may be a hate crime or um, the guy may have some sort of mental problem or they may be practicing, you know, the extremist religion. And Williams notes that Bahamians must be careful when traveling to the U.S. because something like this could happen to anyone. I want to back my attorney what she said uh, over the weekend. And what she said was the United States should warn black and brown people that are entering the United States, okay, to be very cautious, uh, to be um, um, concerned about your whereabouts. Uh, because of the racial tensions that are in the United States. So I, I, I support her in that view. This incident, he adds, continues to haunt him. I lost my first wife to cancer 10 years ago during the same time in March. And so some of the things that continuously go through my head is that both of my, I have two children. Um, my, my son and daughter would have been left without both father and mother. Um, I've since remarried, and I've, uh, you know, I can't say enough how supportive my wife is. 
Um, she's a nurse at the uh, um, hospital, the Rod Memorial Hospital. She's been very, very supportive of me. There were two employees in the store when the incident occurred. While only one did the stabbing was charged for that crime, the other who watched the attack and warned Williams never to come back was not. But here's how Black America got involved to assist in the justice of Harold Williams. My story was aired not only in South Florida, okay, but also in Washington. Wow. Yeah, right? um, some other syndicate shows they picked up on the story when it first aired on Channel 7 News. And through social media, they was just sending out this information and all of the, you know, the black, um, 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 the black um, um, pages and what have you. And people were just leaving negative comments. And um, the shop, apparently they were visited by some um, some civil civil groups and so they decided that they couldn't take the pressure so they closed down. William says no trial date has been set as yet. Stay with us, there's more news right after the break.